Hey guys, happy Friday. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery, and I'm here every weeknight at 9.30 p.m. Central Time, where we relax. Ooh, 8.30. Sorry, guys, we just changed the time. So I'm here at 8.30 p.m. Central Time at... Uh, uh, here every weeknight. So thanks for joining me. Uh, we work on a project every single night and right now we are working on the Jacqueline Steves I Love Home Block of the Month quilt along. And we are on block four, which is the last block. It's a free quilt along so you can join for free until the end of December. That's when, uh, that's when she'll take down the uh, freeness of the project. So make sure to download it before then. Uh, here's my my block uh, four right now. I just need to embroider it and then we will, we have to do all the rest of the, the piecing of the block still. However, this is the last night we will work on this project for a little while. On Monday, we come back and we will be working on the Hemlock Forest Friends Unicorn by Heidi Boyd. So if you want that, there is a link uh, in the project schedule list on here. And that's gonna be really fun. It comes with the batting, the felt, and everything ready to go. And it's, it's hand done, so this will all be stitched by hand and I think it'll be really easy. I don't think there's any turning things inside out or, or anything like that. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun. I'm excited for it. So this is, uh, it's two in the morning there, oh no. <laughs> uh, but this is gonna be happening Monday and Tuesday. Then I will be out Wednesday and Thursday and we'll pick it back up again on, on Friday. Oh, you're going to head to the Mall of America tomorrow. Awesome, Joe. Oh, that'll be fun. <laughs> All right, guys. So I'm going to flip you around and we will get started tonight here. Thanks again for joining me. Ooh, I have, have my giant cone of floss out today for our embroidery. So, All right, let's go. Ooh, set your quilting while you watch. That's fun. So I just wanted to show you guys, here are my other blocks. So we will be stitching, stitching this guy with that same coral color that we've been doing all of the blocks with. So I've been using the same, same color for each, each block. And I think that's going to help tie it together. Uh, so to do whatever you like, that was, that's where we're going with this one again. So roll those guys up. All right, here we are. Um, I'm using, like I said, my giant cone of floss just for funsies. This is what I use to make kits and everything. Uh, <laughs> here's the difference between a normal skein of floss and my giant roll of floss. I do have a link for a half size roll uh, cone of floss. Uh, if you're interested in, in stitching from a cone instead, like if you do a lot of red work or a lot of one color stitching or something, it's, it's kind of fun. Ooh, separating fat quarters into light, medium, and darks. Oh, that's nice, Kathy. Fun to get that stuff organized. All right, I'm, jeez, I'm going to grab a cut of floss off of here already. I chose the, the matching scissors tonight. I got the, uh, Got the tangerine colored scissors. Oops, I think I'm already kind of messing this up, but we'll leave it. All right, I have my hoop. Oh, you got your, Wanda, you got your embroidery supplies bundle today. That's awesome. So uh, you might have seen at the beginning, I have another stack that's going out tomorrow morning, and that should be the last bit. I have a few more to do tonight, and then, then I'll be done and all you guys will get your, your embroidery supplies bundles. So I'm using a hoop that I, that I wrapped with fabric, and I do have a couple videos, uh, some of the, my beginning embroidery ones where I show you how to wrap it, and um, I'm just doing that so it helps protect the fabric and doesn't crease it as much. Uh, Holly, you should be getting a note from PayPal that it's been shipped. I have to ship it in kind of a funny way. I do have tracking, but I don't think that tracking will be, the tracking numbers will be sent to you. But if um, if you want that track, tracking number, just email me and, and I'll, 
I'll look it up. But you should be getting a notice from PayPal that it's it's been shipped. And I do have a couple more to do tonight, so uh, if you didn't get that, no worries, it's it's coming. All right, let's tighten this up a bit. I'm gonna start down here and kind of do just kind of a back stitch. Start with the back stitch of this border again, kind of how we've been doing the other ones. All right, so I'm separating my threads. I'm stitching all mine with three strands of floss, and I'm doing that just because I like the thickness of the line that that gets. So I'm I'm grabbing one strand and holding the rest in my fingers here and then pulling it out like that. Oh, I, I missed that. Um, I love to quill, but terrible needlework like this. Oh, that'd be so fun, uh, um, Seth, to make your own quilt labels. Yeah, well, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm hoping, you know, I'm, I'm rushing through this a little bit, but hopefully um, if, I, if you have any questions, uh, for sure, let me know. All right. Grabbing another thread, I'm doing the same thing. Oop, almost lost my last thread, it's stuck on my shirt. I have kind of a, what I call my blanket shirt on. It's kind of a, it's like a blanket with holes for the arms and it's getting, my thread's getting caught on it. All right, one more. Oh, you, you don't get local mail delivery and only drive to the post office a couple times a month. Oh, all right, Holly. Um, you should be getting, you should be getting a notice from PayPal and it's priority mail. So it should be coming within uh, three days or so. Some priority mail is, is two days, but, um, but between two and, and three days, there's a, a Sunday in there, but I'm guessing it should still get to you by Wednesday for sure. All right, I'm thinking Wednesday at the latest. So I'm putting the three threads back together again. And I'm gonna grab my em an embroidery needle. Uh, Zeb's got my embroidery needle here. All right. I'm going to thread that needle. Oh, we'll go over threading again. So I've put the three ends together. Uh, to help thread the needle, it's sometimes nice to get a nice clean edge. So I'll just clip that little edge. And I do the pinching method where I, um, I'm pinching so you can see, see the thread. If I pinch, it goes away. And if I unpinch, you can start to see it again. So I'm pinching and then I'm unpinching. And the moment I start to see the little bit of thread there, the floss, I put my needle over the top and then I keep undoing my fingers and it kind of pushes it through. Then I just grab the other end and, and pull it through. I'm also gonna start with the away knot, which is a, a technique so I don't have any knots on the back of my embroidery. Then I don't have anything for my threads to catch on and it's pretty secure, especially if you're washing, washing it a bit. So. Throwing a knot there. And oh, what's your groovy cool embroidery needle? <laughs> Gretchen. <laughs> All right. And uh, I'm going to start down here. So for the away knot, I'm going to go about four inches or so away from this point in an area that I'm not gonna stitch over it. So maybe right here would be good or right up here. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go right up here. So the trick is I want a, a long tail uh, when we're done. So for right now, I'm going up here from front to back and there's my little knot. So now we are gonna totally forget about it and start doing our back stitch. And when we run out of floss, I will we'll address that again. All right, so I'm just gonna cruise up this row with the back stitch. That's, that's what we've been doing all of the other blocks with primarily is, is a back stitch. So we're just gonna continue that. We'll cruise along, cruise along on this today. Get some relaxing embroidery in on this project. I, I, at least I 
get the feeling that I'm I'm at this stage of of this project now because uh, you know that that needle turn applique took a while and we won't be back on this um, in for a while until after we finish the unicorn project because we start that on on Monday and then December we get. Uh, the first full week of December, we get the instructions for the sashing and the borders. So we can actually make this all into a quilt top soon. But we'll finish this block, uh, obviously, first, because we need the block before we can put sashing and stuff in between. Sashing is like the little borders that go around each individual block. And then the borders go around the whole mass of blocks. Hi from New Jersey. Hi Jane. Hi Lorraine. Wow, it feels like I haven't embroidered in forever though. It's kind of crazy. I mean, I guess we, I guess I haven't since our, our last block, block three. Feels weird. Feels like I haven't done it in a while. Maybe that's the weird part. That's how it goes sometimes. And I've just been on this quilting kick that I've, I've been having fun doing fabric-y things lately. Oh well, we're cruising through this thread too. We're almost, almost done with this. Oh, you're getting so much better at embroidery, Gretchen. Yay! That's awesome. Yeah, uh, some of these um, things that we've gone over with embroidery, like the away knot or, or weaving in the ends and, um, you know, threading the needle, like it, it's it's those sort of little things. And this is with any of the, the things that we've been doing, like needle turn applique. It's all those little techniques or little tricks that make the whole process so much more enjoyable, I feel like. It can be frustrating until it's like, oh, that's how you do it. I get it now. I'm doing pretty big stitches here. And I, I tend to do a little bit bigger stitches on straightaways or with straight lines. I call them straightaways. Uh, and then I get a little more um, tight with my stitches, like closer together stitches around curves just to give it a just to mimic that curve a little bit more oh you put the label in 2003 mystery quilt finish nice work job done it's so funny i folded my fabric for totes thinking i had all this fabric in my stash and only me two little rows oh funny yeah my brother just popped in Oh, Laurie, I'm using three strands of floss. Ooh, which way should I go? I think, I think I'm gonna go this way because I think I might run out of thread before I get to here. So then I can jump back here and then go straight down. I think that's my plan. I, I kind of like uh, planning it out. Oh, nice Gretchen, time to... Time to get more. Oh, I think the question was asked how many cones of thread I have. Well, it changes at any given point because, you know, I use them for all the kits, but currently I have about maybe 20 or so. But I, I love just it's so fun stitching from a giant roll. Nope, other brother. <laughs> the other one. So someone, one of you guys, and let me know if it's you, uh, in the, in the penguin and fish crafters group, that's where we all can show images and, and photos of what we're working on stuff. But someone did, a chain stitch for these two 
uh, lines right here and I'm totally gonna copy that idea because I love it. It, it kind of looked like um, little pillars in front because a chain stitch is a little wider than the back stitch here. So it, it was kind of cool and, and I really like that idea, especially for I think this style house, I think it looked pretty cute. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do two chain stitches, two chain stitched rows when I get that far. Thought that'd be kind of fun. Almost done with this floss. I think when I'm done with this floss, I or this, uh, um, you know, when I run out of this right here, I'm going to move my hoop so I have the the roof encompassed here, because you know the chimney right here is kind of off the hoop. And then I'll I'll stitch up here and then kind of catch wherever I left off here. Ooh, and we'll actually I'll stitch here and then I'll jump down and do this heart. We got the little uh the little bloops around the heart. And we'll do that with like those little fly stitches or open chain stitches, single chain stitches for for that. Like how we've been doing it on the other ones. A couple other ones. Ooh, I think this is my last stitch. I don't think I can squeak another one out of here. So, all right, I'm gonna flip it around and I'm gonna weave in the ends through the backs of the stitches. Uh, I usually use, I like using a muslin fabric typically for like a, like a more kind of, not completely open weave, but some, the muslin I get has a little more open weave or like less thread count, I suppose it would be another way to say it, than typical modern quilting weight fabric. Um, and I like that because it's easier to pull the thread through, it's easier to pull your needle through, you're not like, you don't feel like you have to have a pliers to pull it through. Um, so I like doing that. This is not that, this is some white, or I, I think it's off-white, some off-white fabric that I had um, that's quilting weight fabric. So it felt like it went with the the rest of the, the fabric. I, I think I did it. I think that was my reasoning. Um, all right, so here's my away knot. I'm gonna clip that off. Gretchen, yes, it's basically a lazy daisy stitch. Lazy daisy stitches are chain stitches that um, you just go around in a circle like with with a point in the middle. That's a lazy daisy. So a lazy daisy is just basically made up of a bunch of single chain stitches. I miss, how do you figure out the even spacing of the back stitches? Oh, you can't figure it out. So I've talked about this a few times before um, when we do some of our stitch alongs. It's, it's basically a matter for me, all right, I'm gonna weave this in three times again. I'm a little close to the hoop, so I gotta back up. But for the neat even stitches, uh, the neatness for me comes from doing the stabbing method of sewing where you stick the needle down in and then you pull the thread all the way through and then you go back up and I can show you once we start stitching again. Um, but it's just a little more accurate than the sewing mess method w where you go in and out and at the same time. So that's one, especially when you're learning, I think it's, it's kind of good to get a feel for, for the stabbing method, just for the accuracy's sake. And for the evenness, it's definitely for me a matter of having like tunnel vision and then like a bird's eye lens bird's eye view. So like I'll be stitching and I'll make one stitch and then I'll just try when I'm making the second stitch since I'm using the stabbing method that I can be pretty accurate. Oh yeah <laughs> my brother put the away not how to link here because <laughs> I had did, did a video on YouTube a while back for for that but um so I'll make the one stitch and then using the stabbing, stabbing method, since I can get like a really good accuracy with that versus going down and up at the same time, I can uh, kind of estimate, all right, I'm gonna make this stitch about the same as that. And then I'll make the next stitch 
about the same length as the last one, but then I'll then I'll look at all the stitches. So I'll be like microcosmed in here looking at each individual stitch compared to the last stitch. But then when I look from like a bird's eye view, then I can be like, oh, all my stitches are getting smaller and smaller. I'm gonna have to start correcting that and start making them bigger again. Or, oh, they're getting bigger and bigger. I'm gonna have to shrink them up. So I'm constantly looking at the one that I just did, comparing it to the last one, and then looking at the hole and seeing if I'm being, um, if I need to get bigger or smaller. And so if you look really close, I mean, these are all pretty close to the same, but a lot of times you'll see, like if you're measuring each individual stitch, they're not all the same, but um, all of them together, they kind of average out to look the same if I keep, if I keep adjusting. All right, I'm gonna pull these three threads out again, even though I, I have three threads here. But when you pull them all out individually, they lie a little flatter. Ah, does this strain my eyes? It does not strain them as much as staring at the computer all day does. <laughs> so it's not so, with, with embroidery, it's not so much my eyes that hurt, but more so my upper back and neck after doing it a while. But yeah, I mean, when my eyes are strained, it's, it's typically not from, what do I do with my needle? Not from the embroidery, embroidering, it's more from like the computer monitor beforehand. You did needle turn for the, all the house blogs. Oh, yay. Oh, you don't want to quilt over them. How's everyone planning to quilt their quilt when you're done? That is a good question that I have not worked out yet, Sue. Um, I'm going to weave in the end here. Oh, wait, let's, let's move this a little bit. But I'm going to weave in the end here. I don't have to do the way knot anymore. I can just weave into the back of the stitches and then just start right away. Because now I have some stitches that I can weave in. But I'm, I'm thinking I won't get to quilting quite yet. I, I'm going to, my plan is to do, you know, we have that project coming up, the Chevron, Charming Chevrons quilt. And I am using that as a learning tool to try and learn how to and figure out and um, get better at free motion quilting on my sewing machine here which I know nothing about. I've attempted maybe twice and not knowing what I'm doing. Uh, so that's gonna be my like training tool for, for that. So that's a project coming up. Uh, when is it coming up? I think January, January or February, I forget. I have it on the calendar in, in the post here. But uh, I'm thinking of doing my training on that and then, um, then coming back, coming back to this and then sandwiching it together and then quilting it, figuring it out then. Um, I'm, I'm considering though, I've been doing some reading on free motion quilting, so I'm actually studying <laughs> before I, before I try it again, but I might do the echoing technique for this. I don't know yet. Like, like we're going to do all the training, all the practicing first on the Ch Charming Chevrons, but I might do the echoing technique where you just, whatever shape is on a block or a quilt, you just go around and around it basically. Um, so, you know, I might go around the house a bunch of times you know, and then go around with another row and then another row. And, you know, we echo, we go into here and do the little bumps and uh, until we hit the edge of the block. I, I might try and do that because I think that might pop out the house a little bit. Maybe we'll go in and do a little bit on the inside, but I don't think so. I don't think we will need to. Um, so I think that's my, my general plan. <laughs> My plan without having really thought through it and without knowing what I'm doing yet. So knowing how to do it yet. But based on just some of the, you know, little things I've been reading, uh, 
I think that's what I'm gonna do. Although I do love a tied quilt and I wouldn't mind putting a bunch of little ties with some like pearl cotton floss in here too. I would, I'd be open to that, but that's, t that's usually my, my, my go-to. So I might want to challenge myself and, and move away from that since all of this whole entire project has been kind of a practice, like get better, like get better at needle turn and, and piecing and, and all that. So maybe it'll be an opportunity to not do what I usually do with quilting and try something new. The not on top of I mean, the handwork. I'm not going to go, I don't think, on top of the handwork, Sue. I'd much rather that just stay as is. And um, especially with needle turn applique, because I think some of the, the stuff that's so special about needle turn is that it kind of puffs off the top of the surface. And I think that's kind of a trait of needle turn. And I think it's really sweet and lovely. And I, and I don't want to... I don't want to squish that down with a bunch of quilting, I don't think. You know, quilting meaning like sewing over the top of, of the things. And I don't know if I want to get so detailed with quilting that I want to go in and, you know, do decorative things within here, which, you know, is totally would be a really fun option. Like you could do paneling or, or I don't know, something, little swirls or something within the house. But I think that's just... That's just, I'm, I, just knowing myself, I'm thinking that's just going to be, I'm just going to want to get it done. <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to want to add more teeny details in, in the house, I don't think. You still have to do this block, but you don't want it to take away from all the handwork, I agree. Time to think about it. Yep, exactly, Sue. So I'm, I'm leaving the heavy thinking of the quilting, I'm leaving that for after my, my training, <laughs> my training with the, um, that charming chevrons where I want to, where I want to work on free motion quilting. And who knows, it just might be, I might just hate it, hate free motion quilting on my little sewing machine here. Like it just might, I just might be like, meh, not for me on, on this machine. Who knows? Or I might love it. So that, that'll be a determining factor as well. You know, if I if I don't want to do it that way, then I might just end up straight line stitching it and maybe adding a few little cute, cute ties for even more texture. I mean, this has a lot going on with it for details, but, you know, we could, exad we could even add a little bit more with uh, some ties. So who knows? So many options. That's the problem, right? That's the beauty of it and, and the, uh, the problem. Not so much a problem, but... Things to solve, decisions to make, and decisions to live with, I suppose. Oh, quilting clouds, love the houses. I love that idea, Phyllis. Oh man, you're going to have to remind me of that. I think that is just, that's a super cute idea. Yeah, I mean, really, we could, instead of echoing, which I still think would be cute, we could add little flowers. Um, kind of here and there, some, you know, echo it a little bit maybe, or put echoed clouds in. Yeah, that would be really sweet. I mean, we could go full-blown crazy details in the house part of the blocks and then leave everything else kind of simple. That would be an option too. Cute buttons on the hearts. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Yeah, there's just so many choices. Oh, I missed uh, missed that. Watching you stitch, I really think, is the weave of that fabric helps make it easier to do the back stitch. Oh, yes. So in general, um, Patricia, in general, that's why I don't always um, embroider on quilting weight fabric. I mean, it's perfectly fine to do it with quilting weight fabric. But I find that some quilting weight fabric is is so tightly woven that it's difficult to pull a needle with um, floss through. So, um, you know, an embroidery needle, at least the ones I like using, I use a five size five embroidery needle. But a, a trait of an embroidery needle is it has a little bit bigger eye, and that's so you can put um, bigger floss through, like floss compared to just little sewing thread. So that means there's a lot, 
there's like some bulk happening right here. So that bulk has to fit in between these little, um, the, the warp and the weft of, um, uh, it's actually the other way, weft and warp of uh, the, the threads in the fabric. So you have like your threads going vertically and horizontal. Uh, sometimes it's so tightly woven that it's hard to pull that bulk through. And I mean, literally, it does feel sometimes like you have to have a pliers to pull it through. And that is not fun. Uh, not fun at all. So uh, that's why I like stitching on fabrics that have a little bigger weave. And so I have a I have an unbleached muslin and a, a bleached muslin, a white muslin that I like using. That's just a hair. It's like normal fabric, like you can like quilting weight fabric, but it, it's got a slightly more open weave. This is a solid. This solid white seems to be working okay. Sometimes it's different manufacturers. Um, have a tighter weave, so you just gotta see kind of what works. Uh, I'm using a size five embroidery needle from DMC. I might have a link to it in here. Um, I may start having them in my shop soon. But we'll see. All right, so I'm going to do one more stitch after this one, and then I think I'm gonna just jump down. Oh man, should I start those hearts? I'm just kind of thinking through it. I'm not sure I'm gonna have enough thread, but that's okay. I'll just start back up where I left off and we'll just, we'll just do it that way. So we'll get as many of these little bloops done that I can with this, this thread that I have now but I have a feeling we might have to get some more to finish all the, finish the bloops. All right, so this is like an open single chain stitch or a, I call it a fly stitch sometimes too. So I'm coming up, I'm, I'm gonna do this bloop first here. So I think hopefully you guys can see. Uh, so I'm coming up on one side of the bloop. I'm going down the other side of the bloop and I'm going to arc my thread in the same way that the arc of the bloop is going. I'm gonna put a little needle through, but before I pull the whole thing through, I'm gonna go right up to like the apex of that arc. And you can see I'm going within the big floss arc that I made too. So it should catch that big arc, since I'm coming up in the middle of it, it should catch uh, right at the end there. And so it doesn't fall down like that, my stitch. I'm gonna add a little anchoring stitch, so a tiny stitch right on the other side of that apex. And I'm not going to pull this tight. I'm not gonna pull it too, super tight because I want it to feel like an arc still, not a V. If I pull it really tight, you're, it, you're gonna get like a sharp V. So it's okay to let a nice loose little stitch there. And that's uh, one of our single chain stitches, sometimes um, you know, more generally called like a lazy daisy, even though it's not really a lazy daisy. Uh, a ch lazy daisy is made up of a bunch of chain stitches. And it's kind of an, it's an open chain stitch, meaning that the starting and the end point don't uh, end in the same spot. Or a fly stitch. All right, so same thing, coming up one side, going down the other, making sure my loop is going the same direction as my loop and then coming up in that in the middle of it at the apex of our little bloop. Leave it loose and anchor stitch on the other side. All right, so we're just gonna keep going around like that and uh, that's the deal for these guys. Um, I'm definitely gonna run out of thread though I think before I get to the and I don't think I'll even get halfway actually. Some stitches like this take up a lot more floss than, than other stitches. And I'm, I'm even, I'm kind of tucking it underneath my heart a little bit too, just so 
so it looks like it's coming out from the heart. Sometimes I'm sometimes I pull them too tight, so I'm I'm loosening them up a little bit. All right, tacking that down. Yeah, I think we can get a couple more in here. Not that many though. So cute though. I think we have these bloops on our heart from block one. I think we, oh, they're around some windows in block two or three as well. But I, we do have them around hearts in another block. So this one will kind of mimic, mimic that other heart. Oh, you love the coral. I do too. It's, it's totally my, uh, it's, it's for, for years now, it's been one of my favorite colors, which I'm a little surprised at because I, I hated like pink and everything growing up. But to me, this doesn't feel pink, even though it's kind of like a pinky, orangey coral. I don't know. I still love it. All right, we're gonna even, we're gonna get to another stitch on this side. This fleck I'm using is better quality floss, not the Walmart kind. Yeah, uh, you'll definitely, if you go from, you know, there's, you can buy those bags of floss that it's like $8 for like 50 skeins of floss. Um, you can get those, but if you start um, getting some of the higher end floss, even DMC, you know, Joann says that by the skein, um, some other stores I'm sure do too. Uh, if you, and that's, you know, that's what's in my penguin and fish curated uh, embroidery uh, floss from the, from the bundle. And I'll, I'll have that listed too, but that's, that's DMC. It's a much higher quality floss and you will notice a big difference, like a really big difference from um, the like $8 for, for a pack of 50 um, compared to DMC and, and other higher end. I think DMC is probably the most common higher end one, but like the super cheap to DMC, that's a much bigger shift in quality than ZMC to other high quality flosses. Like all the high quality flosses um, feel very close to each other compared to the the ch the cheaper kind where you can get like 50 in a bag for, for cheap. They fray a lot more. There's, they're, you know, you could, they're like less color fast usually. And they don't have the sheen and strength of, of a higher quality floss. And we're the good kind, you can separate. Oh, yep, it's, it's harder to separate too. Yeah, you're totally right. Um, the bad ones will, yep, will not up when you separate it and they'll not up a whole lot more when you're stitching. Um, I do have, you know, my floss stash, I just have a bunch of floss together and it's, it's by color. So I don't have different brands separated, but I can, I can still tell the ones that I own that came from one of those big bags of floss just from, from the touch and look at it. A big thing is that it, it doesn't have that sheen to it. And I think that's, that comes from the Oh gosh, I'm not going to be able to say this word right, but the mercedization process. <laughs> I don't think I, I don't think that's the right word, but that's, um, oh gosh, I'm going to have to look that up again, but it's a process to strengthen, strengthen, strengthen the threads, but it, it also gives it that sheen, I, I believe. Ooh, it's been a long while since I thought about that. I'm going to have to get my notes up to date on that again. All right, I'm gonna do one more stitch here and I'm gonna like, oh gosh, maybe I shouldn't have done one more stitch because I don't have much thread left. But I got a lot farther on this than, um, than I thought. A lot farther 
on this heart with that, that piece of floss that I had. All right, so we're gonna anchor that last stitch so it stays in place. Almost done, it's so cute. Patricia, DMC should not, um, should not run by like industry standards of color fastness. I mean, if you're worried, I would check the, the ones that are most likely to run really typically in, in any, in any uh, thread brand is red and uh, like that deep turkey red, like a deep blue and um, sometimes a brown or a black, but in theory, oh, you're black DMC ran. So like those are the ones that are most likely to run if anything. So it's good to do a test. I mean, especially if you're doing like a bright red on a white, I would, I would do a test. They say it's color fast. Um, if you are having trouble, it might be worth um, testing it. Well, do washing it with um, one of those. Uh, what are those? Those color saver things, those sheets from Shout. Color catchers, that's what it is. Um, you could try running it in the wash with that. But if you're nervous, like if you're doing a whole quilt with some of that, um, just a one color, then it's worth worth checking. Oh, someone suggested that I soak it in vinegar, so I did. Oh, and you had no more problems. Oh, that's awesome, Sue. Yeah, so I think there are some rules with this. So I've been trying to learn a little bit more about washing. I think the once you've hit it with the hot water or, or something like that, then it, then it wants to stay how it is. But if you can catch it beforehand, um, don't quote me on that. This is, I'll, I'll look up some more info on this, but there's definitely, people have some tricks to deal with it, um, with bleeding inks and how to fix it and stuff. But color catchers is one. I have not tested it yet because I haven't had an issue yet. Um, but we're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to give it a try in general. Maybe I'll do some white fabric with some bright color stitching on it and, and we'll see what happens one of these days here. But you know what? I think I'm going to call it quits for the night because I know we won't get through two more things of floss. And since we're not going to be working on this again until, um, until we get done with the unicorn, I think this might be just the right spot to quit for the night. So I'm going to take it out of the hoop. I always take it out of the hoop when I'm not working on it because, you know, you can see this crease. Uh, taking it out will um, reduce that crease from becoming permanent. And so will wrapping your hoop like this as well. But look, it's coming along. It's starting to look like something. Um, so uh, uh, hopefully we will get back to this before we get the instructions for the... Um, the borders and sashing because I want to finish this up and you know we still have the whole rest of it to do we have the whole board the whole uh, piecing of this block to do it's not just we're not just embroidery and done we have the rest of it and I think it's more detailed than the rest of them oh well I hope you can get it out soon and I'm glad it wasn't my block <laughs> all right I am going to flip you guys around and uh, we'll call it an evening all right, hello again. So here we are. Oh, it's starting to come together. Got a, got a third of a house done. Or <laughs> we're starting the foundation. That's what that's what we're planning on doing here. So all right, we will come back here on Monday. Uh, I hope you guys have an awesome weekend. Uh, Monday we will be starting the cute little unicorn guy. He's so sweet. And I don't think this is going to take that long, so we'll see. We'll work on it Monday and Tuesday, and if we don't have it done, then also on, on Friday. Uh, I'll be at my parents' house on Friday, so it'll be an on-location shoot. And we'll either work on this if we don't have it done yet, or I will uh, bring, I'll bring this guy with, and we'll embroider a little bit more. So that's that. So thanks again, guys. Have a super awesome weekend. And I will catch you again on Monday. Uh, this will go up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. So you can watch the replay there if you want to check back in on, on some embroidery. 
So, all right, guys, see you later. Good night.